So you are passionate creatures. No matter how dulled down you've made yourself to seem, you are passionate creatures. You are filled with inspiration, filled with passion, filled with connection. You are made up out of inspiration and passion and connection. Desire is what created you. Every ounce of your being and character and body, every cell of your being is created out of thin air, out of desire. It's not true that the one infinite creator has no desires. It is the only one that ever has had a desire. It has had a desire for everything. And now you are exploring everything from infinite points of view. It has a desire for expressing and exploring its infinite nature from infinite points of view through infinite beings. If anything, that is your, pur your purpose, that is your journey, that is your honor, that is your duty, that is your task, that is your joy. It's to express infinity in a way that is uniquely inspired in you. So you see, inspiration is the one infinite creator communicating directly to you. That's why it's not healthy to give up desires. It's healthy to investigate why you think you need and want certain things to compensate for believing that they're lacking to begin with. But when you sort of get the hang of that exploration, you start to see through the major veils of lack. You, know, you no longer believe lack can exist. Now you're abundant. Now your energy is freed up. Now you have become a conscious, free, deliberate, inspired creator. You're no longer afraid of lack. And when you're no longer afraid of lack, every single desire you feel is a true one. It's a sincere inspiration coming ultimately all the way from the Absolute itself. As indirect as that might feel or seem sometimes. It is filtered through other levels of consciousness before it arrives here. It is tailored, it is fine-tuned by higher levels of consciousness before it is given to you as an inspiration. Nevertheless, all that is retraceable to the one infinite beyond consciousness, beyond creation, the enabler of all that there is, the one infinite unity is what generated you. You are an extension, an immediate extension. You are the fingertip of the one infinite creator. You're executing its will already as we speak. Your true desire is its will. There is no difference. That's why selfishness and selflessness at some point become one and the same stream. Right now, for many of us, it might still be a little muddled by lack beliefs. We might have filtered our true inspirations by lack beliefs. And therefore, we might mess things up a little bit and not be as clear and transparent as we could be. But that's okay. Again, it's never too late. To clarify yourself, how do you do that? You follow your resonance. You listen to what feels good. When you get through this process, initially it feels like some churning, some investigation, but it becomes easier and snappier and snappier and more and more effortless and more and more Adam and Eve-like. Oh, it doesn't feel good. Okay, let's go over here. Oh, it feels good. And without any lingering confusion or layers on top of that, it will just be transparent. That is when your desires will be totally clear to you. And when they're totally clear to you, those desires are directly inspired from your higher consciousness and before that from the one infinite creator wanting to express its infinity in a certain way. So there's no difference between what you want and what the creator wants. You don't have to give up what you desire in order to meet the creator. You have to give up your expectations. That's another thing. I completely disagree with if Buddha actually taught this, that desire is the cause of all suffering. It's simply not true. It is the cause of all reconnection. It is your only hope. Desire is your only hope to find reconnection. It is that gravitational pull from the one infinite creator to all of its portions to always stay connected. It's that spiritual gravity that we feel as desire, as inspiration, as passion, as connection. The cause of all suffering is the belief that lack can exist. You see, in all of creation, everything is possible except for one thing, lack. And our society, funnily enough, has picked that one thing that doesn't exist and created all of its systems around protecting ourselves from the inevitable occurrence of that which cannot exist. The only thing, we had to pick the only thing that the Creator cannot create. We just had to. We couldn't not scratch that itch. We had to scratch it. There's one thing the Creator can create. Okay. 
health insurance, government. <laughs> Beliefs about good and right, right and wrong. Do this and we'll feel good. Do that and shit will hit the fan. So we have lack beliefs ingrained in our consciousness, trained into our consciousness. And again, lack has never occurred anywhere to anyone in any way, in any form, in any shape, in any dimension, on any level. Ever. It cannot exist, you see. It cannot exist. You've never lacked anything. I know not all of you see this right now. Not fully. You might believe it because it feels good, but you might also have your hesitations. What about children without water? Well, discover how that's abundant. If you can, you'll start to see as the Creator sees. There's no lack there. There's deliberate free will at work. and has nothing to do with you. doesn't mean you cannot help create systems that make it more available to everyone, but that will be a reflection of the collective free will choosing to want to change its circumstances in that way. You will not be able to create such a system sooner than that. You might attempt to, but you will be killed. If you're so stubborn in your passion and your desire to save the planet that you're no longer listening to your resonance and you become an activist to a great extent because you believe and think that you know what's best for this planet. Now take it as far as you want to, but there is activists that no longer pay attention to their resonance and they become as arrogant as anyone else that is selfishly living for themselves. And they might believe they're living for other beings and in service of love and a better planet. And that might be their original intention. But if they stop paying attention, just as much as anyone selfishly oriented pay, stops paying attention, to their resonance, to an extreme degree, they will kill themselves. Or governments will kill them for them. So you've got to stay within that balance. Because this collective has its own free will. And it will change. And it is changing rapidly, more rapidly than ever before. But we cannot exceed the limits of free will. We were, will not, as an individual, be allowed to break through the barrier of the collective free will. Because we'd mess up the collective theme of exploring the infinite creator in a certain way. The illusion of lack is a part of the abundance of the creator exploring itself through a certain avenue. It needs a lack of water in certain regions on this planet in order to explore what that is like. How can you explore the abundance of love and realization and radiance and finding the light of the Creator in a situation where you're lacking physical means without the lack of physical means. You can't explore that abundance without the seeming lack of physical means. So you see, if you can start to see as the Creator sees, if you can start to respect the greater free will that's at play in individuals and us as a collective, then you can get a real energetic intuitive psychic sense of the rhythm of the wave that we are riding as a collective. And then you can tune into that. And then you can be of service. And then you cannot be too far ahead of your time while still being ahead of your time. Does that make sense? So the selfish way to live is the innocent way to live. The innocent way to live is the self-centered way to live. It's to not believe in whatever you're thinking about everyone else. It's to actually honor how you feel. That's not selfishness, ultimately. It is humility. It is honoring the only guidance system that you have immediate access to. That's where your wisdom lies. Feeling bad? Change the way you see things until you feel good. And then from that good feeling expansive state of self-realization and self-actualization, living in harmony together, you are so receptive and in tune with your higher self, your higher consciousness, that there's less of a difference between the assumed you and the actual you. And the lesser that difference, the lesser the vibrational distance between your personally asserted or chosen self and your actual non-physical support of all that is self, the better you feel, the more amazing of a servant you become, and the more amazing of things you are able to attract to yourself. Again, it works in the harmony. So, be centered on self, in your resonance. Mind your own resonance. That's not selfish. That requires great humility. It requires you to let go of all the insistent thoughts you might be having. 